The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and this is the first show of the 2012-22, uh, let's see, 2012-2013 season of the Exxon Radio Show. We've been on the Talk Star Radio Network now since 2004, and our first broadcast goes way back to 1992. And over those years, I've had the opportunity of interviewing over 3,300 guests from every walk of life. And I'd like to say hello to Ed Shiflett, the, uh, the chief engineer and operating officer of the Talkstar Radio Network, who makes sure that this show goes out each and every night. Bill McFadden down in White Springs, Florida, Victor Ives, the big cheese. And to all our affiliates around the world, thank you and thank you each member of the X-Zone Nation. Over the years, we've talked about many, many things, X-Zone Nation. We've talked about UFOs. We've talked about alien abductions, cattle mutilation, ghost hauntings, things that go bump in the night, Bigfoot, and much more. However, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the number one conspiracy theory is not UFOs, is not extraterrestrials is not Bigfoot, but in fact, the events of September the 11th in the year 2001 when the World Trade Center was taken out by two aircraft, the Pentagon was struck, and then due to the heroics aboard American Airlines Flight 93, another disaster was averted. There are those who were listening to the show right now who believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that President George W. Bush knew about the attacks, that the attacks were perpetrated by the United States of America. There was a television show on entitled George W. Bush, the 9-11 interview. We decided to use modern technology to either prove or disprove the innocence of the President of the United States, George W. Bush. We completed a thorough voice spectral analysis of the audio track of President Bush, and there is no doubt in my mind that President Bush, during the interview, was telling the truth that he did not have any knowledge of the attacks prior to September the 11th, and that his feelings, his heart, the very strength of his being was true. During the next 45 minutes, we will be playing that interview, and I'd like you, the Exxon Nation, to listen. Open your ears and cast aside any beliefs that you may have, and just listen to President Bush. Once again, we have finished a complete voice analysis spectral investigation on the audio track of President Bush during the 9-11 interview. And I believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that President George W. Bush, in the following audio track, will be telling the truth. Once again, Exo Nation, this is our 2012-2013 premiere show, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for making this show so popular and to all the stations around the world for carrying the Exo. The Exxon is truly a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break when we'll start immediately with President George W. Bush, the 9-11 interview. My name is Rob McConnell, and this is the Exxon. 
www.exoneradiotv.com or send me an email, exone at exoneradiotv.com. I'll be right back as we continue, or as I should say, as we start, George W. Bush, the 9-11 interview, here on the Exxon. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net September the 11th is, uh, was a monumental day in our nation's history. It was a significant day, and it was obviously, an, it changed my presidency. Uh, I went from being a, a president that was primarily focused on domestic issues to a wartime president. Uh, something I never anticipated, nor something I ever wanted to be. I started my morning off with a morning run. And uh, I can remember running on the golf course of this resort where I was staying, and uh, it was pretty dark. And uh, I'm sure some of the uh, people associated with the hotel looked out the window and saw these headlights uh, illuminating a path for a runner, saying, who is this nut out there running? So I went for a good long run. Got back and got a, uh, my security briefing, and I remember clearly that uh, of how normal it seemed. I mean, I can't remember the exact topics, but there was nothing out of the ordinary. And then went to the school to tout, uh, to tout this curriculum, and it was all part of a, uh, our plan to highlight education reform. This just into our newsroom, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Let's get this live update from 1010 Winds correspondent. Uh, I had been notified that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. At first I thought it was a um, light aircraft. And my reaction was, man, it, it, either the weather was bad or something extraordinary happened to the pilot. I then... Uh, inform some of my staff members to you know provide help to new york city whatever help they needed to take care of this incident and then walk into the classroom the classroom was full of kids uh who were 
Uh, reading. Read this word the fast way. Get ready. Mad. Yes, mad. Get ready. Cap. Yes, cap. Get ready. Cap. And yes. in the back of the classroom was a yes. full press corps yes. and uh, staffers and some adults. Yes. And I'm intently listening to the lesson. Read these words the fast way. Get ready. Yay. Yes, mate. And I felt a presence Yay. behind me. Get ready. Yes, mate. Get ready. And Andy Card's Massachusetts accent uh, was whispering in my ear. A second plane has hit the second tower. America is under attack. My first reaction was anger, you know. Who the hell would do that to America? And then I immediately focused on the children and the contrast uh, between the uh, notion of an attack and the innocence of children clarified my job, and that's to protect people. Instantly after that, the press corps started getting the calls. And it was like watching a silent movie. In the back of the room, uh, reporters were on their cell phones. They were getting the same message I got, which meant that a lot of people would be watching my reactions to this crisis. So I made the decision not to jump up immediately. No, I didn't want to and leave the classroom. I didn't want to rattle the kids. I wanted to project a sense of calm. It was immediately uh, escorted out of the classroom to the holding room and um, uh, started making some phone calls and watched the uh, footage from New York City. A major disaster in New York City this morning. Both towers of the World Trade Center have been hit by aircraft. Both are in flames. Both uh, suffered explosions. Obviously, I was horrified like everybody else, but unlike everybody else, I had a job to do at that particular moment. I had been in enough crises as governor to know that the first thing uh, the leader of an organization or a state or a country's got to do is project calm. Because if the leader is not calm, it's likely many, many others won't be calm either. So I hastily scribbled a statement and uh, went into a classroom full of parents who were expecting to hear the president say, man, what a great reading program you have, and instead heard the president say, America's been attacked. Please ensure all cell phones and pagers are off at this time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. A lot I, of times the president is, is placed in a bubble or a capsule. In this case, I was uh, able to see the reactions of our fellow citizens, the shock, the concern, uh, the horror, the worry. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. And um, I didn't linger much in the classroom after I'd given my statement because the Secret Service was anxious to get me on the move. I was immediately um, whisked away from the school, put into the armored limo that always follows the president, and we're flying down the highway. Many of the senior members of my team uh, who were in the West Wing were hustled into what's called the PIOC, an underground bunker in the White House. Condi Rice was there, of course Vice President Cheney was there. 
And so I immediately tried to make contact with them and did. Although I must tell you, the communication system was not very effective. I told them I was, uh, you know, stay put. And they'd be hearing from me and I'd be heading home. And Condi calls me from the secure bunker and says, a third plane has hit the Pentagon. Also, there is a fire and an explosion at the Pentagon this morning. Uh, the very seat of our nation's defense uh, apparently uh, been targeted for another terrorist attack. I remember thinking the first one was likely an accident, the second one was an attack, and the third plane was a declaration of war. Zone. The first task at hand was to respond to the attacks and to prevent other attacks from happening as best as we could. I got to the base of the plane and the whole situation looked different. People were armed. Stewardesses at the top of the stairs were, were sad and concerned and frightened. I remember giving a big hug and saying, everything will be all right. And I said, let's go to Washington. I wanted to be in Washington, D.C. as a commander in chief at a time of war. And I needed to be, uh, you know, in the Capitol, making the decisions necessary to protect the homeland and recover from the initial attacks. Once we got on that plane, they cranked Air Force One up, and took up straight up. We got Air Force One over here in the Bruton sector. He's about, uh, Five minutes from Crestview, and we don't know what he's going to do when he gets there. All right, thank you. All right. We're headed toward Washington, and I feel the plane bank. And uh, Andy Card, Eddie Morenzo, the head of Secret Service, came and said, you're not going back to Washington. I said, what the hell are you talking about, man? I'm the president of the United States. We're going back. I need to be in the, I need to be there. And uh, President Bush is uh, not returning to Washington. The White House is not saying where he is heading, but the president was out of Washington at the time. I wasn't happy about it. And I told him, I said, we're going to Washington. And then uh, they held their ground because they felt it would be irresponsible for me to head back into uh, a city that had just been attacked when, in fact, we didn't know what else might come. Uh, I got Air Force One over here at the Bruton sector, and uh, he's been given a clearance after the to go where any way he wants to, so be on standby. He may be heading your way. Okay. Thanks. Sounds like Thanks. He's about uh, five minutes from Crestview, and we don't know what he's going to do when he gets there. All right, thank you. All right. When the third plane hit the Pentagon, the magnitude of the attacks uh, grew dramatically. I came to the conclusion that we were at war. Developments coming fast and furious this morning. The White House has been threatened with a terrorist attack. The west wing of the White House has been evacuated as a precaution. These incidents are happening so quickly, relatively speaking, that my first focus was what can we do to stop attacks and how do we to respond to those that happened. If I yes. break in for just a moment, uh, this late word just coming into us. The FAA has closed off all airports across the country. Uh, no takeoffs. No we land. realized that the enemy was using commercial aircraft or aircraft to attack us. All airports nationwide. Where were you on September the 11th, 2001? This is our uh, version of uh, George W. Bush, the 9 11 interview, as I said at the beginning of this segment. We have done a complete voice spectral analysis of President Bush's uh, interview. It is our opinion that during the entire interview, President Bush was telling the truth. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. We will go right back to this interview 
as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x zbn.net I came to the conclusion that we were at war developments coming fast and furious this morning the White House has been threatened with a terrorist attack the west wing of the White House has been evacuated as a precaution these incidents are happening so quickly relatively speaking that my first focus was what can we do to stop attacks and how do we to respond to those that happened. If I yes. break in for just a moment, uh, this late word just coming into us. The FAA has closed off all airports across the country. Uh, no takeoffs. No we land. realized that the enemy was using commercial aircraft or aircraft to attack us. All airports nationwide shut down. And the best way at that point in time to protect our country was to, was to force every airplane down. And therefore, any airplane left up would be viewed as potentially hostile. Not only was I having trouble communicating with people on the ground, the images of the attacks were kind of flickered back and forth on the TV. And was, I was very frustrated, of course. We'd be flying throughout through these uh, TV zones, and you'd see images of 9-11, of, of the incidents on 9-11. And then as we got out of the covers, they'd die off. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of sadness on Air Force One. We'd seen the images of people dying, and we, and I just knew the heartbreak. Um, that uh, was ravaging families. 
The most powerless I ever felt was when I was watching people jump to their death on TV and there's nothing I could do about it. We didn't know if there were other planes that had been hijacked. So the first decision I made on Air Force One was to give our Air Force orders to shoot down commercial aircraft did, that did not respond to, um, uh, to orders to land. It would have been awfully difficult for a, an Air Force pilot to shoot down a commercial airliner full of full of our citizens and uh, and yet that was a decision I made because I thought it, it it's the best way to protect the country at that point in time I was informed that um, that a, the fourth plane flight 93 went down in a field in rural Pennsylvania and for a moment I thought that plane might have gone down because of the order I had given It took a while for us to get the information on Flight 93, but eventually we learned that about the heroics of the passengers on that airplane. It became apparent we were facing a new kind of enemy. This is, this is what war was like in the 21st century. really don't know what it's like to be a wartime president until the moment occurs. I never campaigned on, you know, please elect me, I'll be a, the kind of wartime chief you'll be proud of. The, the war came upon us unexpectedly. And at that point in time, you just deal with the issues. And there's certain gravity, of course, that comes when you start making decisions that uh, involve life. This one, one of these moments where you, where you can weigh the consequences or think about the politics. You decide. And uh, I, uh, I made the decisions as best I could in the fog of war. But I was determined, determined to protect the country, and I was determined to find out who did it and go get them. I'll stay out to show Air Force One westbound. He's radar contact 2577. Yeah, don't question my where he's going. I'm just watch him, and uh, there's, there's no flight plan in right now. We're not going to put anything in. Copy that. Thank you. Yeah. I was frustrated I wasn't at the command uh, center in Washington. I was frustrated that I was flying around the country. I was frustrated we'd been attacked. And I was frustrated the communication system wasn't working any good. But in, in a moment of crisis like this, it, it, it's important not to be frustrated. It's important to be focused on the task at hand, which was to gather information and make decisions, in this case, on how to protect the country and respond to the attacks. Then the president was actually moved. We don't know where the president is. He was out of Washington at the time of these terror attacks. Uh, he was in Florida, and then he was moved. We heard there. Told... One of my concerns, like the concerns of other husbands and our wives, was was my was my spouse okay? Was Laura okay? And my second concern was were our girls okay? 
took a while to find her. She was in a secure location, and uh, it was awesome to hear her comforting voice. And she had talked to the girls, and they were secure, so I was, that was a relief for me. As I flew around, it dawned on me that we were the only plane left. I looked out the window, and we had armed escorts. But you don't want the president flying back into a into an environment that is dangerous, and if something were to happen to me, um, it would have been a major blow for the for the terrorists uh, because they would have they would have killed the president of the United States in a time of war. And so I uh, I said all right, reluctantly said all right, and we headed to Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, you got anything at 151? No, you can have whatever you need, brother, because uh, we don't have anybody in the air over here. We landed at Barksdale, and it was surreal because Barksdale was in the midst of a exercise uh, that utilized armed bombers and so we landed on this base full of armed bombers that were being heavily guarded by you know armed troops and it was like flying in the midst of a combat zone itself and we got in a vehicle and the kid driving the thing is going felt like 100 miles an hour i mean we're bouncing along and charging along and finally I told the guy i said slow down i mean uh, Al Qaeda's not here. Uh, that's about as humorous uh, a moment as the day had. The American people are getting inundated with pictures of collapsing buildings and smoldering Pentagon. People jumping to their death. There's just unspeakable horror on their TV screens, and they needed to know that the president uh, was one safe and two uh, along with the government on top of the situation all major branches of the United States government evacuated this morning the Pentagon has been evacuated along with the West Wing of the White House the Capitol all major and uh, the scene here is just one right out of one of those movies you would see in Hollywood people walking around with tears uh, holding their heads looking up at what's left of the World Trade Center just shaking their heads in disbelief of utter chaos and just uh, wondering what happened to those folks in the train center. President Bush shortly we told you he's not returning to Washington. He is not in Washington. He is currently in Louisiana and we'll have something to say tonight. I made my statement. They refueled the airplane. We trimmed down the traveling party on Air Force One. And we're headed to Offutt Air Force Base. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. And freedom will be defended. The full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. But make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. is President Bush. Now that, by the way, just to point out what is going on, was actually taped earlier. The president made that statement. It was videotaped. We just heard it. And then the president was actually moved. He apparently is being obviously well protected. The decision was made to go to Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska by uh, the military and the Secret Service because 
They figured this was the safest place for me to be. Very secure bunker there. There's a lot of communications there. When we landed it in uh, Nebraska, we got hustled off to the secure uh, bunkers. But they had a conference room in it, and I had assembled my national security team via the video conferencing tools and off it. And uh, I got a report for how each department was responding to the crises. My question was who did it? The head of the CIA, George Tennant, believed it was the Al-Qaeda. They had the earmarks of an Al-Qaeda attack. But Tennant wasn't that definitive yet. So my first indication it could be Al-Qaeda was during the national security meeting at Offutt Air Force Base. It's uh, during this moment that I made the decision I'm going back to Washington over the objections of just about everybody else. I'd had it. I'd said, I need to get home. A lot had developed. It was important to wrap the day up uh, with a presidential speech assuring people that the government was functioning and responding and that we would take the appropriate actions necessary to protect our country. And uh, uh, I damn sure wasn't going to give it from a bunker in Nebraska. I wanted to give it from the Oval Office. I didn't want the enemy to have the psychological victory of a president speaking from a bunker in the heartland of our country and, and not speaking from the Capitol that had been attacked. So I told the head of the Secret Service and others, I'm coming home. And they prepared the flight, and off we went. The Washington Air Force, what would like to lower, please? Air Force One, departing one five for 7,000. Air Force One, turn left at the end, contact ground point eight. Air Force One, copy. We are to land, we'll be uh, possibly one or So there you have it, Exo Nation. You can clearly hear that President Bush is taking this very seriously, and that... He's telling his side of the story that I don't think many people have ever heard before directly from the president's mouth, in his own words. Once again, we did a spectral voice analysis on the president's uh, interview, and we could find no evidence whatsoever when looking at the spectral analysis that the president was telling anything but the truth. He was showing sincerity. He was showing emotion. He was showing responsibility. But the one thing we could not find was any, I mean whatsoever, proof in the voice spectrum analysis that he was being deceitful. When we come back from the other side of this commercial break, the final four and a half minutes of this interview. Now, the interview in its entirety will be available at www.xzonepodcast.com. That's www.xzonepodcast.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we finish this final segment of George W. Bush, the 9-11 interview. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the X-Zone. And uh, once again, this is the first segment of the first show in the 2012-2013 season. Thank you, everyone, for making the Exxon the great show it is. We'll be back. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. President Bush arrived back in Washington a few moments ago to a, essentially a silent city, Washington, D.C., much like the lower part of Manhattan has been done. As we lifted off of 
Out of Andrews Air Force Base on Marine One, I could see the smoke of the Pentagon. And uh, I remember thinking, here I am, the commander in chief in a war zone. Uh, we'd been attacked by an enemy right here in the heart of our capital. The Marine One pilot took evasive action flying this thing as if we are in a war zone. And uh, uh, we came pretty close to the Pentagon. It was an eerie sight to look down. The contrast was unbelievable between a vibrant city and a city that had been shut down because of an attack. President Bush is back at the White House. He went directly to the Oval Office. We're now told we'll be speaking about an hour from now at 8.30. Live continuing coverage on 10. There was a debate in Washington about whether or not we should declare war. And um, I made the decision not to declare war that night. I did make, the, make it clear that we were going we to protect the homeland. We are going to bring justice. I headed, headed back to the, uh, to the White House, to the Piag. Vice President was there, and a couple of other senior staffers were there. And uh, saw Laura. I gave the big hug, and you know, we didn't need to say a lot. The hug did, a, the hug is all that was necessary. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. You know, I felt I needed to strike the right balance between comforting and grieving and going on the offense. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. So the Oval Office speech was as close to a declaration of war uh, as uh, we could get without declaring war. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down enemies before, and we will do so this time. I had a long day. I knew I needed rest, and I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about the images, thinking about what I needed to do, thinking about the day, thinking about the next day. And I heard a, a guy breathing heavily. And it's Mr. President. Mr. President, you gotta come now. The White House is under attack. All right, Exxon Nation, to listen to the conclusion of uh, George W. Bush, the 9-11 interview, simply go to www.exxonepodcast.com. That's www.exxonepodcast.com. And judge for yourself, Exxon Nation, whether or not the President of the United States was telling the truth, or if you believe in your heart of hearts, that what happened on September the 11th, 2001, was all part of a major conspiracy by the government for the people. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break at six and a half minutes past the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away now. <laughs> 